YouTube friends. My name is Chris. Welcome to my channel. Today is Thursday, December 29th, 2022. And I am here today to give you a wrap up on my December stitching, as well as a year end wrap up for 2022 and a whip parade all kind of rolled into one. Um, starting with my December wrap up, my stitching in December was a little bit on the light side. Uh, if you um, are a returning viewer and you maybe watched my last video in November, I did mention that I had started a project that I was stitching to give to my mother-in-law for Christmas. And because of that, I spent probably the first 10 days to two weeks of December working exclusively on that to get it finished. Uh, and so then, you know, between then and Christmas, there's only a few things that I worked on a little bit. So what I think I will do is as I go through the whip parade, and I show those particular projects, I'll just let you know that that was something that I worked on in December. My project that I made for my mother-in-law, I did make a little video clip um, to show you how it turned out. So I'm gonna insert that video clip here. Hi Flosstube friends, this is pre-Christmas Chris coming to you with a update on my bell pull that I was making for my mother-in-law for Christmas. You'll remember I shared this in my last video. This is an old Bucilla kit, I think from 2000 maybe, um, that I had gotten on the freebie table at Stitch North. And I decided to stitch it up for my mother-in-law for Christmas because I thought it was something she would really enjoy um, because she has been an avid gardener all her life and she loves feeding the birds and watching the wildlife and enjoys her gardens very much. So yeah, that's what it will look like when it's finished. And here is my finish. long. That's how long it is. It's only four and a half inches wide though. So I finished the back just with some pink fabric that kind of matches the pink flowers. And I just did this little fold over. In the pattern they tell you to use bell pull hardware so you can see there's a rod at the top and the bottom. I I couldn't find bell pull hardware readily available so I was just going to use wooden dowels with little finials on the end. But then I remembered this wall hanging that had belonged to my mom. It was a gift to her. And I liked how the creator did this little pocket at the top. So there is a wooden dowel in there that slides in and out. But she left this little space here and that's how I hang it. Just hang that on a pin on the wall because it's quite light. And I like that a lot better than having, um, you know, like the, the, the dowel sticking at the end and then the string going up because it sometimes makes it awkward to hang on your wall, especially if you're switching stuff out because you would need your hook fairly high to account for the the string that's suspending it. So so this way you can hang it exactly at the height of where you might have a something else hung at the other time of the year. So I decided to copy that technique and just created this little fold over flap with a hole in the middle so that it can just be hooked on a hook on the wall and. You don't have to worry about any string sticking up kind of thing. But it could easily be modified. If my mother-in-law wanted it the other way, then I can just, um, I have more of the doweling. I can just make it longer so it sticks out the ends and put the string on it for. That'll be Ollie serenading us in the background. He's feeling a little neglected because I've been working on this all morning. So, So yeah, I just wanted to show you that because... You won't be seeing me again probably until between Christmas and New Year's and I'm going to be giving this to her at Christmas time and I just thought you might like to see the finish. 
finished bottom. So here I'll show you once more. Lots of colors, lots of fractional stitches, lots and lots and lots of back stitching. But it is really pretty. So I hope she'll like it. Anyway, thank you for letting me share that with you. I'll see you next time. Bye. But yeah, it turned out um, really sweet. I was quite um, surprised at how quickly it stitched up. And um, again, the the colors and the details and the back stitching just really brought it to life. And it turned out really, really sweet. Um, so I actually haven't given it to her yet, um, but it is all wrapped. So I didn't want to unwrap it to show it to you um, in this video. So I, I just thought I'd still just keep the clip and show it. But like a lot of um, North America, we were part of that big storm slash blizzard that came through a couple of days before Christmas and roads were closed around here. So even though the storm finished, um, you know, by Christmas morning, I think it was pretty much over the roads were still closed and nobody could get through and it wasn't until later on Christmas Day I think they finally got things opened up so we never did end up getting together with uh, my husband's family so I have not given my mother-in-law the gift so I will report back um, once that does happen and let you know um, her reaction and how she felt about it so so today we're gonna we're gonna be doing a whip parade and I'm gonna go over um, First, some statistics for the year, and then I'm going to run through my whips, um, oldest to newest. I thought it would be fun to kind of do a project bag bag parade at the same time. So, so show you the project bags that my whips are in. Um, just ahead of time, I will mention nothing is ironed. It was just easier to stay organized if I kept everything in the project bags, and there would be no point in ironing it and then folding it and putting it back in the project bag. So. I do apologize for that. I usually like to iron things before I show them in my videos. Um, and yet there will be a little bit of fussing as I take things out and put them in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so let's get started with some statistics. So I keep uh, track of my stitching in a little um, whip journal that I made myself just out of some um, chipboard um, book fronts. It was an old Stamping Up product that I had in my stash. Just covered it with some uh, scrapbooking paper and sanded the edges and I inked the edges a little bit as well. So I just sort of covered it. I made some little um, tabs in here. So share in, in that section I put the things I've been working on that I'm going to share in my next video and then whips obviously are all of my whips done are projects that I've completed and then spare are just extra pages. And these are just little pages that I made myself and I print them out. I have put them on cardstock rather than paper. So they're a little bit sturdier because some of them are going to be in this book for a while. And yeah, so I've just got the pattern name, the designer, start date, finish date, fabric, threads, and then any notes I want to make about anything. So, so that's where I keep track of everything. So I was able to go through um, all of my project cards and look back through things. So I did figure out I started 20... 22 with 21 whips so that's not too bad that's a number I'm kind of comfortable around there but then I did do 16 new starts <laughs> in 2022 so that added quite a few more to that now I did have some finishes I think I figured out because I don't I, I did give some things away and I may have be forgetting some things but I do believe I had about 10 finishes over the course of the year so so I think I'm going to jump right into the whip parade and we'll do um, like a little number count down here to see how many I'm ending the year with. And I'm going to go from my oldest whip to my newest whip and um, I'll give you the dates of when I started them, that sort of thing. So, so my oldest whip is, again, if you're a returning viewer, you probably know is my behind the bit piece. Um, this is a uh, pattern by White Willow Stitching. I started this on December 31st, 2018, and I'm stitching it on an 18 count oatmeal Ada with the called for DMC. So this is the project bag that this is in.
this is what it will look like when it's finished. I know that's not a great photo, but it gives you an idea. It is a pattern that was created from a photograph. And there's where that is right now. So he did not, he, he's been my focus project for quite a while now, from a lot of 2022, um, but he did not get any stitching in December. And again, I am gonna be tucking them back in here so that I don't um, have too much of a mess to clean up when we're done. And I use Pattern Keeper for a lot of my full coverages. So I am finishing 2022 with 57%, 57.3% of that chart completed. My next oldest uh, project is Christmas Village. It is a pattern by Sarah Germani. what it's going to look like when it's finished. I started this project on July 7th, 2019. It's done on, I think, a 28 count lamb's wool linen with all of the called for DMC. It's hard to see. So that's, I have almost have four to six pages done. So I'm getting there, it's getting close. It's a really pretty chart. I really like the colors. I have a little bit more to do on this little, on this page down here. So that is Christmas Village. So I will mention too, if you watched my planning video for 2023, my, I've divided up my whips into different size categories and I'm going to work on the oldest one in each category until it's done. So, um, so yeah, behind the bit is a large one and that's my focus project for my large and um, Christmas village. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Christmas Village, which is in my Evertote um, bag that we got at Stitch North. Um, this one will be my focus project for my medium large. So both of these projects are going to be getting worked on in January. My next oldest project is a uh, walk with dog which is an artisy pattern um, based on the artwork of Leonid, Leonid Afromov. I'll put a picture up here of what it will look like when it's finished. Sorry about that I just had to get a drink of water my throat's a bit dry. So I'm stitching this on an 18 count white Ada with the called for DMC. Um, it's in this Final front project bag. I love this cat fabric, as you can tell. It's you'll see it featured in a few bags. And that's where I'm at on that one. Lots of color, lots of color changes. <laughs> you can see all these park threads right here. So this one, according to Pattern Keeper, is 7.66% completed. So there's still a fair bit to go on that one. And I don't know if I said, I started that one on July 10th, 2019. The next one is uh, one of the Christmas stockings that I'm working on. Um, it's called Gifts for All. Is what it's going to look like when it's completed. I started this on July 14th, 
14th, 2019. And it's being stitched, sorry, it's being stitched on 14 count white Ada with the kit threads. So basically all the kit items. And this is where I'm at on this one. So it basically for the stitching, just have Santa's coat, although that is a big chunk you can see of the stocking. But then I have all of the back stitching and there's some cording I think that has to be done. But it's gonna be really pretty when it's done. My next project um, is in, oh, I guess I didn't, sorry. I'm not doing a very good job of showing. So again, this is another project bag, more of this gray fabric. The fun fabric is inside this one, which is this bright green floral print. So my next one is my DMC color card. It is in this final front project bag, with this farm scene on the back. Um, I will put a picture in here of what it will look like when it's done. So this is from an Etsy shop called Men on Wool. I started this on November 22nd, uh, 2020, and I'm doing it on 18 count Ada with all of the called for DMC, of course, because it is a DMC chart. So that's how far I am on that one. My next one is in this cute little bag. I actually got this in my Smalls Exchange at Stitch North. I'm not sure who the maker is. You may recognize this little, I don't know if the girl that gave it to me made it or if it's something she purchased somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's very sweet. So this holds shooting stars which was a Christmas sell from 2020, I think, by the, it was on the Silk Stitching app by Dorothy Kanzi. I started this on January 10th, 2021, and it's done on 14 count black Ada with the DMC. So these are mostly the called for DMCs, but I think I changed my orange a little bit to more of a burnt orange. The called for was fairly bright. And you can't really see it in the video, but in the gold, I actually added in a gold metallic along with the gold DMC. So there's a little bit of sparkle, but as I say, you can't see it. You can see all the cat hair on it, but you can't see the sparkle. <laughs> so this is my focus project starting next month for the medium category. Next up stallion which is in this Canadiana you can't see the inside very well again that's where the fancy fabric is this is also from an Etsy seller um, Anna Duplant I started this on January 10th 2021 and I'm doing it on 18 count oatmeal Ada with the called for DMC Floss. Um, so this is where I am. Oh, I apologize. I'll put a photo up here of what it will look like when it's done. And this is where I'm at now. And I am doing this, if you're new here, I'm actually color completing this because the designer actually, when you get the PDF chart from her, she gives you a a standard chart with all the symbols on it, but she also gives you each color individually. So that sort of sparked an interest to try color completing. So what I've been doing is I've stitched this is every time I complete a color, I take a photo and then I add it into like a little photo montage video that you can watch sort of the picture developing. So I just thought it would be fun to do that to document it and then when it's completed it would be really cool to see the whole thing from the beginning to the end as each color is added in. So far it's been going okay. Um, obviously there's a lot of counting involved in doing that um, and there's always a risk that 
you're going to make a mistake. So I've kind of told myself that if I end up making a really major mistake, then I, I probably won't keep doing that. I'll just correct my mistake and maybe go back to standard full coverage stitching. But so far, it's been working out okay, and I haven't had any major errors that haven't been easy to correct. So, pardon me, I'm just going to grab that thread before I forget about it. The next thing you know, the uh, the cat will be batting it around the around the house. So that was stallion. Next up is my um, Leaves of Love by Tellen Emblem. Um, this is one of two in a series. Uh, well, not a series. Two um, companion pieces. That's what it will look like when it's done. I started this on April 25th, 2021. I'm doing it on 28 count black Jobelin with all of the called for DMC. And it is in, this was my very, very first project bag that I ever made. where I am at. The colors just pop on the black. That's what really attracted me to these pieces. I um, saw these at StitchCon 2019. Um, Chris Ann had a trunk show in the annex at StitchCon and so the two of those were stitched up and on display and I saw them and I thought yeah I think I want to stitch that so I purchased them so that was Leaves of Love the next one is Santa's truck stocking um, it is in this project bag which again is one of the first project bags I ever made um, so Santa's truck stocking. This is a stocking for my husband. It's a dimensions kit. It will look like this when it's finished. You've probably seen this. I think quite a few people have stitched this. Um, I started this on May the 4th, 2021. That was the year that I did Merry Mania and I worked on um, Christmas projects for the month of May. Um, to celebrate Stitch Mania. I'm doing that on the kit. Um, so the kit fabric, which is a 14 count Ivory Ada and obviously all of the kit threads. Up next is Hunter and Foxhound, um, which is a Luca S kit. It's in this bag with these cute little dogs on it. I started this on May the 18th, 2021. It will look like this when it's finished. Don't know if you can hear that. We have a steel roof and it's getting mild today and so then the snow comes off the steel roof when the weather gets warm again. So this is the kit fabric which is really nice. It's actually a gridded fabric. I've never worked with a gridded fabric before so that was fun to try that. So that's where I'm at with that one. Next project is in this project bag. Fun Christmassy fabric. There's the inside. So this is Celebrate Christmas, which is the Madame Chantilly Christmas tiered tray. I started this on May 15th, 2021, another Merry Mania. I'm doing on 
32 count platinum linen with the called for DMC. And there's what that one looks like. So I've got pretty much the top tier done. I think there might just be a little bit few branches I have to do down at the bottom. That's really fun to work on. I really like her patterns. I always say they're just a nice mix of full um, solid color and color change. So you don't get too tired of stitching one color, but you're not constantly having to change colors. So, and I just like her whimsical designs. So that was Celebrate Christmas. My next one is spray paint. It's in this fun vinyl front bag with sharks on it. I will put a picture in here of what it will look like when it is finished. This is an artisy pattern uh, based on the art way, artwork of C.J. Lotta, L-A-T-T-A. I started this on July the 1st, 2021. I'm doing it on an 18 count Ada with the called for DMC. I did dye this Ada myself because there's a lot of dark in the picture. I wanted to not use like a stark white Ada. And uh, so I kind of dyed it with a gray, but I decided while I was dying, it was gonna play around a little bit and try out some other dyeing techniques to get some different modeling. You can kind of see some there. So I used some brown, I think, with it as well. I know this is a full coverage piece, so you're never gonna see that fabric, but I just thought it was a good opportunity while I had all the dyeing stuff out to play around a little bit and see, you know, how things worked out if I tried this or I tried that. So I was actually pretty happy with how it ended up looking. So it's kind of a shame that it's gonna get covered up, but I'll just know the next time what I need to do to create that effect, so. And yeah, uh, Pattern Keeper tells me that I'm 16.5% done with that pattern at the end of 2022. Next up is another kit. These, um, a lot of these horse ones are ones I started in July of 2021, which was my birthday month. And I was doing hashtag stitch all the horses. So I was stitching on a lot of horse projects that month. So, uh, so this one is called Horses. It's by Marejka, I think is the kit maker's name. what it will look like when it's completed. Sadly, this one does not have a project bag. It's just in the plastic bag it came in. And that is where I'm at on that one. Very pretty. I don't have an exact start date because I started a few in July and I think I didn't write down the exact start date, but it was a July of 2021 start. And that kit fabric is a 16 count cream Zweigart Ada. And um, I believe the threads are DMC threads, I think. Next one is another hashtag stitch all the horses. Uh, this is white horse and I'll put a picture here of what it will look like when it's done. This is in this bag. I think this is a Lori Holt fabric. And it just has a grungy red interior. Um, this is another Etsy pattern, uh, Ava's designs I believe and again this was a 2021 July start. I'm stitching this on an 18 count white Ada with the called for DMC and this is the one that I believe there's only nine 
colors, but then there are a number, maybe seven blends. But it's surprisingly fun to stitch. So that's what I have done so far. And it stitches fairly quickly, I guess, because there aren't a ton of color changes, so. But it's amazing how she's gotten the shading on this. And Pattern Keeper tells me this one is 13.38% complete. Next up is um, a pattern um, by Heart Strings. It's in this Christmas bag. This fabric inside. Um, it was a series of patterns, I think, called the Santa Factory. And this was the September Santa. So they had come out with one for each month that year. And this is where I'm at on that one. So I started this on December 24th, 2021. It's on a 32 count picture this plus legacy linen with the called for uh, DMCs. And I actually do have the little um, Mill Hill heart beads that they call for that are hanging on his little strand that he's holding there. And I do hope to finish him um, as a stand up maybe but I'll see. He's actually smaller because I did him on the 32 count than I was thinking he was going to be. In hindsight, I maybe should have done him on a larger or not a larger count, a smaller count. I know. On like a 28 or 25 to make him a little bit bigger. So I may frame him. I may make him as a stand-up. I'm not sure. Um, but he is going to be my focus project in the small category for next year. My next project is in this project bag. <laughs> this project is called Whip It. I'll put a photo in here of what it will look like when it's done. This is by Awesome Pattern Studio. I started it on December 31st, 2021. I'm doing it on a 28 count linen called Time. I'm not sure who the dyer is. Um, and I'm actually doing my own DMC conversion. I've switched from the pinks and purples to more earth tone neutrals, browns and grays and taupes kind of thing. That's where I'm at on that. And that actually, because this is in Pattern Keeper as well, I'm actually 33% of the way done. I know it doesn't seem like that, but, you know, I guess the top of his head is the widest part because his nose is fairly narrow. But my next project is also in a bag made of this fabric. This is a fabric that we used for our um, swag bags for the Hidden Stitchers Retreat last March. Yeah, it was March. So this is a project called Daisies by an Etsy seller called Counting the Stars. This is what it will look like when it's done. Um, and I will list all of these projects with links if anybody's interested or wants to go check out other things by these designers. They'll all be listed in the description box down below the video. I started this on March the 3rd um, at the Hidden Stitchers Retreat on 16 count white Ada with the called for DMC. And this is the one that recently, I think I showed it in November, uh, I had been stitching all the way across, but I decided I wanted to try diagonal stitching so that's where I, that's when I switched to, to here. So this one is 6.89% complete. So, and there's still a lot there to stitch. It 
it's one of those ones where you see it and you don't really think it looks that big. <laughs> and then you like start figuring out how big of a piece of fabric you need after you buy the pattern. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a little bigger than I envisioned it was gonna be. My next one is called Eye on the Sparrow. It's in this Christmas bag, but it's not really a Christmas project. This is a, a pattern by Silver Creek Samplings, which will look like this when it's done. So it says, do not worry, birds do not sow or reap, yet the Lord God feeds them. I just like that little bird. I like that sentiment. Sorry, parked threads. So that's where I'm at on that. I started this on March 6th in 2022, also a new start at the Hidden Stitchers Retreat. It is stitched on 32 count, picture this plus legacy linen. I did have a fairly large piece of this, so a number of my projects are being stitched on it because it's just a really nice neutral and it's all stitched in DMC, their chart. So all the call for DMC. My next one is in this project bag with this fun camping pattern. Foxes, so um, this is actually called Fox and Friend. It is a Teresa Kogut pattern. This was a gift from my friend Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. This fox is so adorable and that little bird. So this I started on April the 2nd. So it was a new start at the Stitch North Retreat. It's being stitched on the 32 count Lakeside Linen in the colorway pair with all the called for threads, which Nicole gifted me all of the fancy flosses to go with this. And that is where I'm at. Look at how pretty even just those browns are on that fabric. So nice. This project is in this project bag. I love this fabric. Sort of this mustardy color. So this is um, a project, it's called Quiet Night. It's a Dimensions Petite kit. I started it on October 13th of this year. I'm stitching it on the kit Ada. Which is an 18 count Navy Ada. It will look like this when it's completed. And I'm stitching it with all of the called for kit threads. And I only have the tiniest of starts on this. And those, those are half stitches and they're supposed to be half stitches because it's that background sky up at the top. So that was a fairly recent uh, new start. Um, my next new start was in this bag. So here's this cat fabric again with a gingham check inside. So this is actually a series that I've decided I'm gonna consider series as one whip. So I'm not gonna break it into 12 separate new starts or 12 separate finishes. It's just, I started the series and that's one whip sort of thing, so. Um, so this is a year in chalk by Hands On Design. And I started this on October 13th, 2022. So I decided to start with the October one. This series has been around for a while. I'm sure most of you have seen it before. So this is the one that I've started with. 
and that's where I am so far. So I am doing this on the Weeks Dye Work Gunmetal, which is the call for fabric. Uh, but I am doing it on a 32 because it was, we were trying to get the 30 um, and it was just taking forever. So we decided to switch it to the 32. And I'm doing it with um, combination of DMCs and Gentle Arts and Weeks. And I've kind of just, I did get the chalk, which is what the white is all done in. I know some people just do it in DMC, which again, I think would be perfectly fine. And then I've just chosen hand dyed flosses from my stash that I have to do the colored part of each chart. Sometimes it's the called for, so I believe this one, this is carrot, and I believe that is the called for orange in this particular. Although I know it looks brighter orange on there than it does on mine. Yes, carrot is the, the one that's called for, and that's what I'm using on that particular one. So if you're a regular viewer, you've seen a lot of these recently. So. My next one is in this particular project bag. So there's the back, there's the front. Inside, it's just this sort of squiggly swirl. So this is um, Cardinals in a Christmas Tree, which is an artisy pattern. I'll put that here, what it will look like when it's finished. It's based on the artwork of Abraham Hunter. I started this on November 9th, 2022. I'm doing it on an 18 count uh, Zweigart Ada with a called for DMC and I hand dyed this um, Ada as well. Again, just so it was a darker background rather than this dark white. This one I just did a straight gray color. So that's just the top corner. And again, I thought I would try stitching this on the diagonal and see how that goes just for something different now my next group of three projects are all in this project bag which again is one of my oldest ones sort of that tone on tone b fabric and this floral fabric uh, i put these all three together because um well you'll see in a minute so the first one I'm going to show you is um, one of the temperature cells I'm going to do for 2023. It's a pattern by um, Jardin Privé. If you go to their website, it's one of their free charts along with a, no a number of um, temperature charts that she's done over the years. I think this was the one for 2022 and I think she did one the two years prior to that and now she's done a new one for next year so you can definitely go check that out if you're interested uh, i am pre-stitching this as much as i can so that next year i just have to fill in the colors for the days i don't have to actually stitch the framework of of the piece um so this i actually started um my pre-stitching on um october 29th Uh, I will put a picture here of what it will look like because she's released all the pieces now. So that's what it's going to look like um, when it's finished. Now, the flowers, the petals on the flowers are what you stitch. So there's each flower has seven petals, so a week basically, um, to record the temperatures. I uh, am doing mine a little bit differently because I want a little bit more consistency across the piece. So I've done the outside of each petal in white and then I'm just going to do the center part with the color um, and that's that's where I'm at I still oops <laughs> I still have the bottom half of the I think there's three more rows below where I'm at so I still have a fair bit of oh and now I'm showing you the back <laughs> let's get it right here I still have a fair bit of pre-stitching to do on this one um, but I just really like the little motifs she's thrown in there. And I've seen a couple of people stitching it for this year that have done the, like the full petals 
in each color and seen it like because they had a fair bit done I wasn't sure I liked how that looked overall with that variety of color uh, it's just my own personal preference the aesthetic of it so so that's why I decided to do them in the white so the white's going to be predominant what you'll see but then there'll be the different colors in the center of each one so that is um, the first temperature cell that I'm going to do um, and that is a 36 count porcelain uh, fabric uh, dyed by uh, Roxy Flosco that I purchased when I was at Stitch North. And I have to be honest, it's a really nice piece of fabric to stitch on. And it's the first time I've actually stitched on 36 count and I really like it, so. So that was gonna be my temperature cell for next year. And then I came across this one. After I'd made that decision and started stitching, I, I found this one. So this is, uh, by a designer, Chantal Dupuis. She is here in Quebec, Canada. Her Etsy shop is called Paint with Stitches, which I'll link down below. And this is a temperature cell she came up with for next year. And I thought it was really clever because she has like a Canadian one. So she gives you the basic framework, but the center, so July and August, is kind of a landmark for that particular province. Um, so I'm doing the Ontario one, which is uh, the CN Tower. So it looks like. So this one I'm also pre-stitching. So that's where I am. So I've got the CN Tower, but there's different provinces. And so there's different landmarks you would put in that July and August face which is this space right here. And, um, and then you fill in the windows with the different colors. So I'm thinking that is gonna look really cool. So when I saw that, I just thought it was such a clever idea. I love skylines, seeing skylines. And I just thought that would be really fun. And if I could get all the pre-stitching done, which I will finish this week, um, it'll be really quick to fill in those windows. Like some of them are only two, in fact, some of them are only one stitch. Like these ones in the CN Tower, there's only one stitch in there. So it's not gonna take long to do each day. And the way I'm gonna do these, well, and I should say, so I'm not gonna do this one as 2023 because I'm doing the Jardin Privé one as 2023. So what I've decided I want to do, because my husband and I have seemed to have a few conversations um, especially this fall going into winter about how the climate does seem different now than it did when we were kids. And you know, we were talking about the size of the snow banks and stuff like that, but who knows, right? You're smaller when you're a kid. So maybe the big snow banks seem bigger than they do when you're an adult. I'm not, I don't know. But I'm going to do this particular chart in temperatures from 50 years ago. So from 1973, and then I can compare temperatures in 73 to temperatures in 2023. So I think that's gonna be interesting to see. And the way I'm gonna work on these is every Friday. I'm gonna sit down and um, I have my little charts that um, Jardin Privé provides. So my little chart, so I'll just write down all the temperatures from that first week or up until that Friday or the Thursday, and I'll stitch those. And then the next Friday, I'll do the same thing. And I'll stitch them both. And I'm gonna do highs for both. So that's what I'm gonna do there. But if you watched my planning video, I had also talked about when I was originally looking for a temperature chart that I wanted to do, there was a black work project that um, kept calling to me that uh, it's designed by Peppermint Purple and she does have a temperature cell if you're interested in doing a black work temperature cell. But I also discovered looking through her patterns that she had like a weekly black work cell. So every week you would do a block. 
but I didn't necessarily love the layout and the color palette for that one. But I discovered she had this one. And I really like the color gradation in that one. I like the uniformity of the squares. It's five by eight squares, that's 40 squares. So I thought, well, I could just do that and do one a week. And that would be easy to keep up with as well. And that gives me a little bit of grace if I get behind, because obviously there's 52 weeks and there's only 40 weeks in that. So I could have it finished by the end of the year. So I started pre-stitching it. I started it on December 10th. And I did try doing this um, on like another type of fabric. Like I was gonna do it on a Monaco, um, but I wasn't liking how it was looking. So I did just decide to go with an 18 count Ada to do this. So I'm pre-stitching this as well. So I still have a few more of the blocks to do. And I did do the first black work block because I wanted to see how it looked on the Ada. And I was happy with how that looked and how it stitched. It was fun to stitch. So I really enjoyed doing that. So, so I'm gonna be doing that on the Fridays as well. Cause again, it doesn't take very long to stitch up one of these little blocks. So those three projects are all gonna to live together in this one project bag. And every Friday I'll pull it out and uh, work on each of those and by the end of the year they, they will all be all be done. My next project is in this. This is now one of my favorite um, project bags. This is some Blackbird Designs fabric. It just has a white interior. Um, so this uh, is Jingle Bell Christmas Tree Farm. It will look like this when it is finished. Um, this is by Victoria Sampler. I started it on Christmas Eve, so December 24th of this year. Um, I'm doing it on, I believe, the called for linen, um, which is a 28 count smoky pearl. But as is always the case, the color definitely looks different to me than it looks in the picture. To me, it's almost more of a darker, greener gray, whereas this looks like a lighter, bluer gray. But when I first started stitching the brown, I was like, mm do I really want to do it on this fabric or do I want to get one that's lighter? But then when I added in the white, like the white popped so much and it did kind of remind me of a dark sort of stormy sky in the winter. So I think it's going to be fine. So I've never stitched one of these. I don't know if you guys have. They are a little bit intimidating because there's a ton of specialty stitches, which is fine, but there's just a lot of information in the, in the chart. Like... Like these are all instructions of what <laughs> you need to do, but you just break it down and I just keep reading and rereading to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And I'm just going to take it one step at a time. And so far I'm just doing regular stitching and I'm enjoying how it's coming together. So that's been really fun. But like there's all of these flosses and beads and everything in there. All different kinds of things. A lot of it is um, in silks, which I've never stitched with silk. So the white in that is the first time I've ever stitched with silk. So that was fun. And then the last one I'm including, I haven't started it yet, but I am starting it on um, New Year's Eve, so on Saturday. So it will technically be a 2022 whip that I will be carrying into 2023. And that is going to be this Heritage Crafts Kits based on the artwork of John Clayton called Hard Frost. So I'm gonna start this on 
New Year's Eve. And again, it's in a fancy Ziploc project bag. So um, that will be started on Saturday. It's a 27 count white Zweigart even weave and it's DMC threads that are in there. So there's my number. That's gonna be the number of whips. I believe it should be 27 if I've done everything right. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I started the year with 21 whips. I'm ending with 27, that's not bad. Uh, but I would like to get that number down. Like it would be nice to have a project bag for every project I have going. So right now I have a couple in bags, in Ziploc bags. Um, but yeah, I would like to get closer to the 15 to 20 would be my ideal, but we'll see how things go. So, so yeah, my plans for 2022, as I said, are those four focus projects that I'm going to work on um, for approximately a week each. There'll be a few days left over the month that I'll work on the largest one again for those two or three days just to um, get a little bit more work done on the big projects. I'm going to be sprinkling in some random wheel spins on my whip wheel um, probably every week just as relief projects so that I don't get burnt out on my focus projects. So um, I'll probably have a variety of things to show you, not just those four um, in each video. And then I'll also be working on those temperature cells and that black work cell that I'll be able to show you. So. That is everything I have. Uh, those are all my whips. Uh, if anybody has any questions about anything, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I will link in the description box um, all of those projects and designers if you want to go and check things out. Um, if uh, The other thing that I guess had crossed my mind was whether to do a finish parade and show you my finished pieces. Some you have seen if you've watched some of my older videos. There are some I haven't shown before. If that's something that interests people, um, let me know in the comments down below and I'll think about uh, how I'm going to maybe do that because some of the things are hung around the room. Some of the things are hung around the house. Some of the things have been given away but I might have photos of them um but yeah if that's something you're interested in let me know and I'll see about doing that but otherwise I will be back at the end of January with a January wrap-up to show you what progress I've made and what all I've worked on and how my temperature cells are going I'm going to try that new format for a couple of months and see how it works out see if I'm enjoying it if I find it's not working the way I hope it does then I'll go back to what I did last year. But that's all I have to share today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Until next time.